So we bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, again, we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have your Bibles. I want us to turn to St. Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter. And uh, I want to give you my text, and then I want to read more scriptures to explain the text. But I want to give you the text first. So many times when we read the Bible, we run across phrases and verses that we've known for years, uh, but somehow the seriousness of what is said doesn't sink in on us. And this is one of those verses. The 30th verse of the 19th chapter says, But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. I got to thinking as we were singing that song of God Bless America, it's the first time tonight that I it kind of dawned on me that's a prayer. And instead of it being a song of how good America is, it's a prayer of, oh, God, have mercy and help us. We in America, and I've thought also from this text that many times, as far as Christianity is concerned, we kind of think of America as being first and Russia as being last. But I want you to know something. It may be that Russia may come out first. I want you to stick with me. We might find ourselves being last. And Russia, that's asking for these thousands of teachers to help them, it could be the Holy Ghost revival will break out there and we'll follow them in it. Wouldn't that be something? Out of atheism and all these years of preaching Christianity, we'd come out last. Now I want to start here with the text. I want you to see where Jesus, why he gives this and where it comes out. I want to start with the... Uh, the, the 16th verse. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? And Jesus beheld, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we've forsaken all, and follow thee, what shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit at the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones. He's talking to the disciples now, the twelve. Sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and every one that hath forsaken houses, and brethren, and sisters, or father, and mother, wife, or children, and lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit eternal life. But... What are we going to get but the first? Now, it doesn't say all the first. Now, it doesn't say everybody's first going to come in last. It says many. So it doesn't say all. But many that are first, and he's talking now to Peter. Now, you're the first ones, but I want you to know something, Peter. You be careful for as many that are first, they're going to come in last. And then he goes on in this 20th chapter and gives them a parable to explain it. For the, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that had an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. 
And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing in the marketplace and said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise, and about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing and said to them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And they say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when the even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning with the last unto the first. You start paying those that got in last, you start paying them all first. And when they came, they that were hired at the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed... Boy, that's what gets us in trouble is what we suppose about Jesus. We don't know what Jesus is going to do. They suppose that they should have received more. They had worked all day. They had been hard at it. They had been going at this thing. And they suppose they ought to get more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that is thine and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? And is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few are chosen. And the Lord added his blessing to the reading of his precious word. Now, this is all connected together. Now, I want you to notice it starts with the rich young ruler coming to Jesus. He's saying, Lord, what can I do to have eternal life? And so Jesus told him, he said, keep the commandments. And uh, he said, which? Well, he named them. Honor thy father and thy mother. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal and so on and so forth. And the young man said, I've kept all, all of these from my youth up. But it's interesting to me that this young man had kept the law, but it didn't satisfy his heart. He said, there's something else I need. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus changes the subject on him. First, he came inquiring about eternal life, and he said, that hasn't, uh, keep the law, keeping the law hasn't satisfied me. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you, be per if you want to be perfect now... He didn't say if you want eternal life, he said if you want to be perfect. Go sell what you have and come and follow me. The young man, he couldn't, go, he couldn't go all the way with Jesus. He was ready to keep the law. He was ready to be good. He was ready to be a good citizen. Ready to keep the law, do what was right. But he couldn't go all the way with Jesus. And he turned around and was very sorrowful. Jesus gave the statement then of how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples saw it, they said to Jesus, who can be saved? If this young man can't get in, how can, how, who can be saved? And Jesus uh, said, with men, it is impossible. And that's true. It's impossible for any man anywhere to be saved. It's a miracle. But God can work it. Well, when Peter saw this, Jesus said to him, Give away all you have and come and follow me. Peter spoke up and he said, Lord, we've forsaken all and we're following you. What are we going to get? See, he, he served this. Jesus said to this to the rich young ruler. He said, Sell all you have and come and follow me. And Peter said, All right, Lord, we've done it. Now what are we going to get? So Jesus then gave him this parable. Now... The problem with the rich young ruler was not with the law, but it was with perfection. That was his problem. Now, but I said, we look here this question of Peter's now. We have forsaken all. What are we going to, to give? And so he gives him this story of the one going out in the vineyard. And uh, now I want you to notice it says those that started the first hour, he they agreed. Peter asked him a question, what are we going to get? I want to know now. And so he, in this parable, he says those that agreed with me, they want to know what they were going to get. They want to know what they were going to get. 
He's answering Peter's question. Now, here's a man hiring a vineyard, and these people came, and they wanted to know what they were going to get. And so Jesus tells him on this that those that agreed with him for a penny a day, finally when it came down to it, they got to think it's so much for themselves, they supposed they were going to get more. Now, I want you to notice those that came in even down to the last hour, they didn't, they didn't dicker with him over anything. The first ones, they, they said, what, what, are we gonna, what are we going to get out of this thing? Uh, and uh, Jesus told them. Now, I want to tell you something, dear ones. Whenever you agree with Jesus or dicker with Jesus over anything, you're going to lose. Now, these others that came in, even down to the last hour, there was no agreement over anything. They just trusted him. He said, you go on into the field and labor and labor and I'll, whatever's right, I'll give you. And they went in, they had no idea what they'd get out of it. They didn't require anything. They didn't ask anything. They just went out to work. They trusted the man. They trusted everything from the... and. Uh, so, how many people there are who simply, what I want to say, they, 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 they've served Jesus a long time and they want to get paid off for it. They want to make sure they get their share. But I think here, people like you're in Russia asking nothing, but may come out first because they, they, they would trust and love Jesus. But look at here, these people. How many serve Jesus on the basis of what they'll get? See, this is what Peter's asking. What are we going to get out of it? Now, very few people will really serve Jesus. Like Brother Maxwell of Canada, I've heard you've heard me mention his, his slogan for life is hoping for nothing. What a slogan. Hoping for nothing. That way, he said, you're always satisfied, you're always happy, you're never disappointed, because you never expected anything in the first place. It's the person who expects a lot who gets, who gets disappointed and comes in last. Now, it says here, I want you to notice that this is an unnatural story. Because on earth, people for so much work, they get so much pay. That isn't true in the kingdom. The kingdom of God does not operate like this earth operates. And if you've worked all of your life for Jesus, and you may think, well, that's a, that, that has mounted up to quite a bit of reward. I want you to know in the kingdom of God, it doesn't add up to anything. Come on now, stick with me. I know that doesn't make sense. All the hours of prayer, all the hours that you've spent in practicing in the choir, all the hours that preachers put in studying, and all the hours that you've done for Jesus working, I want you to know it doesn't have to mount up to anything. And I want you to know you'll never get paid for it. As somebody who gets in the last hour and hasn't done any, will get as much as you've got. And Peter said, Lord, what are we going to get? And the man who expects to get something, he's going to come in last. If you're expecting that Jesus is going to favor you in any manner for all that you've done, in any manner, I want you to know you're among the last. If you're expecting anything. Come on now. <laughs> See, it's going against human nature. Well, look how faithful we've been. Look at all we've done. We've been, my, oh my, we're such wonderful, favored people. And uh, could it be that Revival for our day, if we're expecting anything out of it because we're with Revival for our day, we're going to come in last. The eleventh hour. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. He says up here, the kingdom of heaven is like, and he's telling us what the kingdom of heaven is like. He's not talking about earth. On earth, if you've been working long hours, you might even get double pay. You won't in the kingdom. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. Are we living for the kingdom of heaven or aren't we? Are we living for the earth? 
On the eleventh hour, there was absolutely no agreement. They just simply trusted the man. And they got as much, they got as much pay for trusting in one hour as, in other words, the fellow that worked for one hour got twelve times as much as the fellow that worked for, for all day. Twelve times. And it's rather interesting here, too. He said, when you go to pay these men off, he said, you call in the fellow that came in last and pay him first. <laughs> fellow that worked hard all day and weary and tired and like he's paying, like to go home. He has to sit by and wait till the fellow got in last, get his pay, and he may have been already home on his way to the market to get food for his family, and he's sitting there and hadn't even got paid yet. Come on now. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus is trying to help us to see those that are going to come in first and those that are going to come in last. What are you expecting out of Jesus? What do you expect out of, uh, out of this church? What do you expect from the preacher? What are you expecting? I expect this, I expect this. If you're in the expecting business, you're in the last business. You want me to say that again? If you're in the expecting business of anything, you're in the last. And if you don't expect anything, I want you to know you're in the first. You'll be the first one to get paid off, and you'll get as much as anybody that's worked hard for Jesus for years, for months, for years, and worked hard and given hard and everything else. I want you to know that you're going to be ahead of him if you don't expect anything. The man that expects a lot is the man that's going to come. Now, notice that's what Jesus said to Peter. Peter said, Lord, to the rich young ruler, Jesus was talking. He said, give what you have and come and follow me. And Peter said, all right, Lord, we've done. what are we going to get? And so Jesus told him about here, those the labor went and I, he agreed with him. Now, they, that is mean they talked it over. What am I going to get out of this if I work for you? And uh, when you make any kind of agree and expect anything out of Jesus or out of the church or out of the pastor or anything or in the expecting business, I want you to know you're last. So the first hour, now I want you to know it's the first hour, man, he got what he agreed for. And if you expect anything from Jesus, I want you to know that you won't get any more than that. And if you don't expect anything, I want you to know you're going to get a whole lot more than you than, than that. Well, it looks to me like we better leave everything to Jesus and forget it. Just leave it to him. Trust him. For the man that trusted the one that hired him, he got paid first and got as much as the fellow had worked for all day. He got just as much. So it says here, that many that are called, I mean the last, many that are last, Jesus telling Peter, many that are first. Now, that, I'm glad it didn't say all. So it doesn't have to be. But it says many. That is uh, just, uh, I'm sorry that word many is in there, but it just sounds like, sounds like too many. That have worked hard for Jesus, been faithful through the years. I want to tell you, these were faithful men. These were good men. These were the disciples. Peter, John, James, they were the disciples. They were among the finest and best in Jesus. Now, wait a minute, I want to tell you something. If you begin to expect anything, what are you going to, if you want to expect, what are you going to get out of this? You're going to come in last. We've worked hard and sacrificed for Jesus and done this and done that. I want you to know you're in the last. Well, it says many are called. There's this last verse, the 16th of the 20th chapter. The last shall be first, first, last. For many are called and few are chosen. Most manuscripts, old ones, do not have that part in there. I don't think the New International Version, I don't think, has it in there. It just says the last shall be first, the first last, unless many are called but few are chosen. It's not in there. And I looked at a number of trans different, tra several different translations, and it's not in there. And they say it's not in the old manuscripts. But I was looking at G. Campbell Morgan, and he said, well, it's not in there, but the true meaning for those who do put in, the true meaning of it really is that many are called but few are choice. I like that. Fewer choice. 
God has a lot of servants serving him. But only a few choice ones. And the choice ones are those that don't agree with him for anything and don't expect anything and just serve him. Whatever we get out of it, it's up to him. It doesn't make any difference to me because I don't expect anything. That's a choice servant. And he'll be first. So the first ones can be first. And the last ones may be first. That's why I'm wondering about Russia, these dear people. We look upon them and maybe it's coming in at the eleventh hour. Look at the thief on the cross. Brother, he got in he got in on the twelfth hour. Uh, and he he didn't do anything for Jesus. He, he just didn't do anything. But only there to ask him, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He acknowledged Jesus before that crowd. And I tell you, Jesus said, This day be, thou shalt thou be with me in paradise. And he was the first one that God took into paradise with him, was this thief. Now I want you to notice, he was being crucified. He wasn't being crucified for Jesus. He's being crucified because he was a thief. So you might say, well, here's a man, he's a wonderful fellow. He's crucified for, for Jesus. Well, this man was being crucified because he was a thief. And Jesus took him first into the kingdom of God. He got in there. So, dear ones, I simply give this little message to help us to see that we, 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 the first people, in, if they're expecting things out of Jesus, are going to come in last. And the people who don't expect anything, but just trust Jesus. The, the last ones that got in on the eleventh hour, they trusted that man and got as much as the fellow had worked all day. God will reward us according to our trust and our faithfulness, not according to the amount of work you're doing. Can we trust him? Can we not expect anything? Can we just love him and commit the rest and everybody else to God and not expect any more than anybody else? If somebody else gets more than you do, wonderful. Praise God. We'll rejoice in it.